Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. In this video, we're going to discuss the significance and the structure of the circuit of Papes, also called the Papes circuit. So you can see the structure of it over here. We'll be discussing that in a lot more detail in a few minutes. Now, the circuit of PAPES is a network of neural structures that contains many components of the emotional brain, so the limbic system, and this circuit is absolutely necessary for the consolidation of episodic memories into long-term storage. So a brief review of the different kinds of human memory. First we have sensory memory. This is memory that lasts only fractions of a second. You might not even think of that as actual memory. Then we have short-term memory, which is working memory, basically what we're dealing with at the given moment. This is memory that lasts at most a minute, so less than a minute. And then we have long-term memory, which in theory lasts a lifetime. And the process of consolidation here refers to taking that short-term memory, what we're dealing with at the given moment, and taking that information and solidifying it into long-term memory so that at a future time we'll be able to recall that information or recall that event. Long-term memory is further divided into explicit and implicit memories. The implicit memories are sort of unconscious, things that you don't normally have to think about, you just do, and they're usually procedural type of tasks, like tying your shoes. When you go to tie your shoes, you don't have to think about and recall, okay, the string goes here, and then I loop it around here. In fact, most of us, probably unless we were actually doing it, could not tell you in words how to tie your shoes. You just do it. That's more of an implicit memory. Explicit memories are conscious memories, and most of them are declarative memories that have to do either with facts or events. So semantic memory is a type of declarative memory that has to do with facts or concepts. So when you're studying for your history exam or studying facts for your biology exam, that's more semantic memory. You're learning facts, and you have to regurgitate those facts on an exam. Episodic memory is more about events or experiences. So this is more remembering the day that you got married, or maybe the day that you graduated high school or graduated college. That is an episode in time, and that would be episodic memory. And so the circuit of PAPES is absolutely necessary for taking those episodes, which are initially just short-term, and then consolidating them into long-term memory, uh, where we can recall them at later times. The other thing that the circuit of PAPES does is it establishes emotional significance to those memories. It could be good or bad emotional significance. So for example, when you graduate high school or college, hopefully that was a great feeling. And so every time you think about that event, it may conjure up good feelings or happy feelings. But they don't necessarily have to be good feelings. In some cases, the episode that's in your long-term memory might conjure up negative emotions. A really good example of this is actually from the third Harry Potter movie, The Prisoner of Azkaban. Over here on the left is Severus Snape. He's an instructor at the school. And over here on the right is Sirius Black, who at the time, Snape believes, is a guilty felon who has escaped prison. Now, if you're not familiar with the movie, there's these creatures called Dementors that while you're in the prison, they slowly suck your soul away, and it's known to be an awful experience. And so Snape says the following line. The Dementors, they're so longing to see you. Do I detect a flicker of fear? And so you can clearly see that look of fear on Sirius Black's face because when Snape mentions the Dementors and the memory of them in the prison, it clearly is a fearful experience. And so that would be an example where Sirius Black's Circuit of Papes has assigned a negative connotation or a negative emotional significance with the memory of those Dementors in the prison. And so as you can see, those emotional significances of those memories can actually facilitate survival, particularly if the memory is negative. Now, in some neurological conditions like Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and Korsakoff syndrome, which is a result of chronic alcohol abuse, these can actually cause damage to certain pieces of the circuit of PAPES. And if you cause damage to any one of those pieces, it can impair not only episodic memory consolidation into long-term memory, but also establishing the emotional significance of those memories. And so in this scene right here, if Sirius Black had had, let's say, Alzheimer's disease and had damage to the circuit of PAPES, 
When Snape says this line, he might as well have said, yeah, buddy, let's go see him together. Now we're going to go over the structure of the circuit of papes, and it is just that, a circuit, meaning it's going to start in the same place that it ends. It's going to begin in the hippocampus at the hippocampal formation. It's going to loop around and then end in the hippocampal formation. And the hippocampal formation specifically is where the long-term memory consolidation occurs. All these other structures that it goes through are thought to really be involved in that assignment of emotional significance to that memory. But the consolidation itself occurs in the hippocampus. So we're going to begin in the hippocampal formation. That's these cell bodies right here in red. And these cell bodies, of course, have axons, and they're going to project all together and run through this structure called the fornix. So all this right here, where you have these axons, this is the fornix. So these axons moving through the fornix are going to synapse with these cell bodies right here that are located in this structure called the mammillary body. And there's two of them. There's a left and a right. This is one of them. And then these cell bodies located in the mammillary bodies have axons that project superiorly. And these axons belong to the mammalothalmic tract. So here's the mammalothalmic tract. And these axons then synapse with cell bodies in the anterior nucleus of the thalamus right here. So the entire thalamus is not involved, only the anterior nucleus is. And the reason they know that this is involved is because when there's lesions to the anterior nucleus of the thalamus, this actually causes spontaneous and inappropriate crying and laughing. And then these cell bodies here within the anterior nucleus of the thalamus have axons that project further superiorly, as you can see right here, into the cingulate gyrus, also called the cingulate cortex. And those axons then have a snaps with another set of neurons here, also in the cingulate gyrus. And then this tract right here is the cingulum. And the cingulum really loops around here back to these green neurons, which are meant to be part of the entorhinal cortex. So the entorhinal cortex neurons then, as you can see, are going to synapse back with these red cell bodies, which constitute the hippocampal formation. So if we go quickly through this list of structures, we have the hippocampal formation, and then the fornix, which leads to the mammillary bodies, and then we have the mammalothalamic tract that goes up to the anterior thalamic nucleus, and those axons go up to the cingulate gyrus, and then the cingulate gyrus through the cingulum loops back around to synapse with the entorhinal cortex, and then back to the hippocampal formation where long-term memory consolidation occurs, specifically of episodic memory. And as that information travels away from the hippocampal formation to other structures, in particular the mammillary body and cingulate gyrus, this is where a lot of that emotional significance being tied to that episodic memory is thought to occur. Not totally proven, but thought to occur. And then the consolidation itself is in the hippocampal formation or the hippocampus. Okay. So hopefully this video gives you a good understanding of not only the functions of the circuit of papes, but also the structure and how information flows. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.